No. The most Italian answer ever. No. This is not the car's problem. I, I, I want to see, see what it what it's like at, at like club cruising speeds. Okay. Hey folks, today's video is brought to you by Bob's Watches, the official watch retailer of the Smoking Tire Podcast and the only place that I buy Rolex watches from. It's not just Rolex, Omega, Patek, Panerai, Cartier, you name it, Bob's probably has it. Everything on their website is in stock and ready to ship. They have a whole team of technicians inspecting, certifying, photographing, servicing their stock so you know that what you're getting is exactly the watch you see on the website, serviced and ready to go. Hundreds of good reviews across the internet for Bob's watches. Also, independent certification is available if you require that. If you're one of those people getting the call from the AD, your new Submariner is in, sir, by all means, buy it. No hate. But if you're not one of those whales, you got to go somewhere like Bob's. So you might as well head over to bobswatches.com slash TST. Check out the selection I have curated from Bob's stock. Maybe you like something, maybe you take it home. Hit the link in the description to check it out for yourself. And thanks to Bob's for sponsoring not just today's video, but a whole year's worth of videos. It's the only place you want to go for a Rolex watch. Oh, what a day, folks. What an opportunity here because I got a phone call at, uh, I don't know, 10 a.m. <laughs> yesterday, uh, yesterday yeah. from Lamborghini who said the first Aventador Ultime has arrived and we can have it to you in three hours. <laughs> do you want it? And I was like, uh, yeah. Yeah, I do. Sometimes these things happen. <laughs> yes, occasionally those things happen. And here it is. And the car, I kid you not, was dropped off with less than 50 miles on it. They didn't break it in. They just dumped it off a truck and uh, sent it to me. So we are doing the break-in. We are. Uh, in this video, we will answer a couple of basic questions. Main question is, is the Ultime, which is the final 350 Aventadors they'll make, uh, and then 250 Roadsters. Right, 600 total. 600 total. Uh, is it just the SVJ Touring, as many of our Instagram commenters pointed out? And we will also find out, is it worth the $560,000? Uh, they're asking for this particular car. 500 base, this one has 60K in options. And is the Aventador even in Ultima trim, still relevant in uh, 2022. Right, I mean, it, it is made it for cars. 10 years, so is it long in the tooth? It has been know. a minute. Um, and the, the, the boilerplate uh, information is this this is the most powerful Aventador ever. It has 769 horsepower at 8,500 RPM, 531 pound feet of torque at 6,750 RPM. Still using that OG 7 speed independent shifting run gearbox with a dry plate clutch and uh, all-wheel drive. Zero to 60, 2.8 seconds, top speed 221 miles an hour. It's very tough to nail down the curb weight of these vehicles. Yeah, because they give it to you in dry weight. Dry weight. Dry weight. Yeah. What do you weigh without blood? <laughs> Best guess, 36s somewhere. It's 34.15 dry, yeah. something like that? The best guess is the curb weight is in 36s. Uh, still has hydraulic power steering, has rear steer, it has a carbon tub with inboard uh, extruded aluminum uh, subframes and inboard mag ride shocks. Yep. It has giant carbon ceramic brakes and they have retuned uh, for it has a little more torque that goes to the rear than the S model and uh, this one has uh, two, uh, $26,000 in paint. 20, $26,000 and paint. it's gray. Yes. It is flat battleship gray. It is gray. gray. It is 26 very battleship in gray. So uh, drive modes, Strata is street, Sport is sport, Corsa is race. Ego is very appropriately named, uh, but it's the driver programmable one. And I have programmed it so that we have soft dampers. We have middle steering and then we have Corsa powertrain. Interesting thing about getting a car with such low miles on it is that it became very apparent on the way up here that the brakes were not yet bedded in and so even though these are very enormous 
very powerful carbon ceramics, they don't work quite as well as they will with a proper bed in. <laughs> The sound does not get old. Does not get old. The burble tune is much more of a crackle tune in this car. But in this, I believe it. You know, yeah. I mean, it might be programmed, but we know that there were V12s before burble tune existed that just crackled because of overrun. So in this, I believe it. And somehow it's more subtle than some of the Elantra tunes I've seen. Right. Oh my God. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> and the speed is extraordinary. Although the gear changes are very antiquated uh, compared to modern stuff, the faster you go, the better it gets. The harder you're braking, the better it downshifts. And what they've really done well over time, the early Aventadors, you had to drive almost like a front wheel drive car, deep, deep trail braking, not get back on power until they were straight. The programming of the rear steer has really changed that game entirely. Oh, um, we reviewed one with the Countach and the event store in like 2011 or yeah. something. And it was actually the car you ended up buying, uh, the Countach. But I remember the amount of lift you'd get in the front, right. getting on the throttle mid corner, even the lightest bit right. was like a car doing a wheelie. And right. it, it felt unsafe. It did. So they've dialed that out pretty significantly. Uh, the rear steer programming is superb. Starting with the S, they've incrementally improved it. The SVJ rotated on the track. It properly rotated. And hold please for tunnel. Very important. Where's our window button? Window button's in the middle. Second gear from four. Here we go. And Still does that well. We just blew out the mic, didn't we? We did. All the lights flashed. We blew it all out. <laughs> I love that this car is very solid feeling. It feels like a really high quality, well made item. Uh, the materials are excellent. It looks really nice in here. I mean, the, yeah, the, the Audi of carbon, radio from 2004 Alcantara. could go, but the materials yeah, are good. You are, no one's paying attention to that when they get in this thing. Like, that screen is brilliant and bright. The carbon surround looks nice. This Alcantara with these laser cuts looks really cool. I don't know if they'll last more than like a month if people start touching them, but they look really awesome. This, the, you know, for something this wide and this heavy, the agility is there. It is there. I mean, it's not agile like a GT4 RS. It, it can't be. Right. But it's got a fucking 770 horsepower <laughs> V12 in the back. Jeez, that, that kick. The kick, is right? hard. I actually, when I'm going flat, I like the kick. I really do. Yeah, it's the occasion thing. It's, it's what they said when they made the LFA, is that right. they put the kick in on purpose to engage you more, to give you more of an experience, which right. I think I think it's valid. You know, when everything's just seamless, you end up with what? You end up with a CVT. Right. Where the kick is bad is when you're in street mode, in automatic, having a coffee with your hand because it still does the buck, but it does it when it wants to and not when you tell it to. So you're not prepared. Right. When the, the car spends most of its life cruising around town and it does it badly. Yeah sense of occasion, uh, the sense of, you know, this is what Lamborghini is really about, being mildly uncomfortable, not seeing anything, and having the most wonderful sounds. Oh, Crackle Tune. Crackle Tune is way better than Burble. Yeah, because there's an end to the Crackle Tune. Yeah. It's just a... This is so fast. It doesn't feel fast because it's so planted and it, yeah. it doesn't rock back that hard. And then I look over at the numbers. It's very, very fast. Yeah, the speed that the you, you can't look at the speedo. You'll have a, you'll have a little poo. Right. The, the butt dyno here was like, oh, it's like 60. And that kick is. Whoa. Got a little wind noise on the right side. That's because of the massive radiators. The, giant, the radiators in this thing are gigantic. They They're like are. pizza boxes. 
All right, we're going to find a turnout so Mr. Clapman can have yes. a go. When was the last... Because I'm very privileged. I have been... We'll raise the nose. Pull into the dirt here. Oh, going too fast. Lifting. No, the dirt's pretty low. Oh, no. Oh, there we go. I had to go... I had to drop it down to a low speed. But the nose lift is good. It doesn't cancel out while you're turning the wheels, which is good. Yeah, that's important. Um, I think the brakes are bedded in. <laughs> I have been privileged in that I've gotten to drive every Aventador, every version, coupes, roadsters, everything. And that's awesome. I'm super stoked. So I can count the incremental you can improvements feel the changes in this car. They've made. But the last one you drove was 2012, the roadster, 12, yeah. right? Yeah, okay. So not. <laughs> yes, I got it. Got the weirdest message ever on a car. Lower the car, risk of dazzle. Uh, what that means, I don't know, but I am dead. Let us know in the comments what you think that means. Risk of dazzle, best warning light ever. <laughs> the ergonomics are interesting. Like, yeah. I, I get in, I have the seat dropped on the ground, my hair is touching the roof. Yeah. So for you, I mean, your head is almost touching the roof. Do you remember what the very upfront and honest Lamborghini person told me when I said I didn't fit in it very well? No. The most Italian answer ever. No. This is not the car's problem. <laughs> you're not, like, if you're over 5'8", you could forget about a helmet. Want to go for Corsa? Yeah, let's do Corsa. All this right. is a smooth road. Yeah. All right. Road. Lifting temp disabled. Lifting temporary disabled. So I think yeah. we're down now. I think we went down. Okay. Yeah. And goodbye. Wow, I can still. There's the, the lift is better in the corners, or the the like the way the nose lifts. Yeah, you can still feel you it still a little can, bit. You still can't get on the throttle super no. early. It has a massive stagger. You know, front yeah, oh, to yeah. rear, the rear tires are like ten feet wider. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, the brakes are not bedded in yet. As Correct, you said. right? Yeah. <laughs> so it, you know, McLarens or I don't know, like 918s, Ferraris. You can get on the gas a lot sooner than this car. To yeah. put it in perspective for anyone who's been cross around shopping. one of those cars. Yeah, cross shopping. Oh, the sound, though. Oh, the no. sound is Peak so good. torque is at 67.50. So Very you, high. So the, the characteristic of the engine, although you can run it lower than that, you really don't get that massive power until you're way up top. That's the big difference between this and like a twin turbo V8 yeah. and a McLaren. Because peak power in this is 8,500. Right. Let's run it out. The, yeah, the shift is smoother higher up in the rev yeah. range on the gas. It's if very weird. If you shift weird. it above 65, yeah. it's fine. It sort of does like a power shift. Yeah, it's much smoother. Whereas down below that, you it's you yeah. feel the manual shifting. Yeah. It's like riding with somebody who's actually shifting. This is incredible. This thing, so if dry weight's 34, I was looking up, the, e, the A12 GTS weighs 3,900. Yeah. So even if you add 300 pounds of fluid to this, let's say, you're still lighter than that car. And well, this looks like a It's still like a, a carbon vehicle. tub, bro. Yeah. It's still a, a carbon tub is, you know, saves weight. And you, you feel it. It feels very rigid. The steering is very quick. It's got a nice weight to it, though. The, it does. It does. Gosh, this is just, this is an experience. Like, objectively, I think the A12 is better. It's, it's, it's like, if you measure it, it's like it has oh, yeah. more room. Um, it's a better car. It's a better car. But Lamborghinis are not about objective judgment. Like, the Countach yeah. is named Awful after, car. like, a literal subjective expression, like an emotion. Like, holy yeah. crap. Yeah. So, like, subjectively, this is such a special experience. And a very unique experience these days as everything goes twin turbo and gets quieter and quieter and, and like smoother and better. So let's go. Now we're in ego. So I just right. softened the shocks. Let's see how. So I think in this setting, with the soft shock, the turn in is really good in this car. Yeah. It is quick. Rear steer. I mean, yeah. rear steer is some magic shit. It really is. It, it transforms the front end of a car using the rear end. I mean, how do you not want to just rev it out and listen to it all day long? And it really, you know, the, the programming of the all-wheel drive system 
it gets the power down really, really nicely. Yeah. Do you know what the torque split was, front rear? I could not find that number. No, but they they favored the rear a little more versus the S in this model. Yeah, you just got to go and go in and then roll. Like, you don't roll on the gas till the last quarter yeah. of the turn. Ooh, the dampening's nice. It soaked that up. I mean, this is a it's this good, is right? smooth tarmac, but with some uh, some rollers underneath. Yeah, it's very good. Inboard mag ride is a really, yeah. really good. That's a really, really good, good setup. setup, right? Saves but like uh, this weight. car, like what I love about this car is that it's an adventure. Like this, driving this thing is an adventure. Yeah, it is unabashedly itself. Yeah, and it always has been, and it the handling is much better, which. When I drove that old one, like I was very disappointed. Like, yeah. Because the handling was the handling's bad. Kind of sketchy. Yeah, it was and I was like, bad. It, it was meeting your hero, and your hero's a jerk. And now they've kind of fixed that. Yeah. It's like it, it's imperfect. Yeah. But they've really done a good job improving it. Uh, one and more. it's it's quite charming. Wait, let's put it in auto mode. Oh, I, I, I want to see, see what it what it's like at, at like club cruising speeds. Okay, we should test that part of it because it's okay, a big part of the Okay, this is life. regular old auto. All right, so we're just cruising, ladies. What's up? That <laughs> downshift took like three seconds. Yeah, it's. Let's see if we can get up to upshift. We gotta go around again. Okay. Good. Wow. It's terrible. That was like. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. If there's one thing you don't ever want to do in an Aventador, it's put it in Strata Auto. Yeah. It's just not. Good. It's gonna make people think it's. It's broken or it's, it's cheap <laughs> or it's. It, and I only say that because this has been around ten years. In that ten years, the advancements yeah. in dual clutches in other from other OEMs has been so extreme yeah. that the comparison is uh, is quite. And there stark. didn't used to be a dual clutch that could hold this kind of power, and now there is. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is a good spot here. here. Yep. Yeah, perfect timing. Um, I mean, but but, okay. So, to go back to where we started, is this the SVJ Touring? I think, yes, it is. Yeah. Uh, in fact, it's, it's, if you want to use an, an actual Porsche analogy, it's more so than Porsches, because Porsche, it's just trim in a wing. The everything else is the same. The suspension's the same. All that stuff's the same. This, you actually have a more street-oriented suspension. Yeah, and um, 10 more horsepower, actually. And a little extra horsepower to offset the, the weight of these seats or whatever. This car, it's 55 pounds heavier than the SVJ, right. which is like comfy seats it's, and some sound editing. Yeah. It. yeah. Um, so, yes, it is. Is the Aventador still relevant as a supercar for $560,000? I think it is yeah. actually. I, I believe it or not, it's it's not as objectively good as a seven twenty or as you know some other more modern cars. Uh, but as a supercar experience, it does not disappoint. No, and it's it's a it's a rare experience. You yeah. can't find this with the noise and everything else these days. Right, it's going it, away. Yeah, that, and it's very very cool. Um, is it worth the money? Well, I don't know what it's like to have this kind of money, but you won't be able to buy something like this pretty soon. All Lambos will be hybrid. Um, you know, cars are getting objectively better, but not necessarily subjectively more exciting. And this is unashamedly exciting. And look, extremely exciting. The only other cars that are like the, the A12 is the same price. Yeah. And if you want to go to a different mid-engine V12, you're talking seven figures or yes. anything that looks this exciting yeah. and sounds this exciting. You're going Pagani, Koenigsegg, like you're way out yeah. of that, this price range. So in LA, yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of Aventadors. Yes, it's probably LA, Miami, and like Dubai are probably the highest concentration in the world of Aventadors. Um, so you do see a lot of Aventadors here by comparison. Anywhere but those cities, an Aventador is. The whole town knows you're there. Yeah. And Aventador is a showstopper anywhere else besides those three places. And people are always excited by them. You know, they're, the, the design has aged beautifully. This is a stunning car. It looks gorgeous. It still looks as extroverted as it always has. Right, yeah. right, exactly. So thank you to Lamborghini for letting uh, the smoking tire have a uh, first crack at this. It now has 108 well, miles yeah. on the odometer. <laughs> and uh, we're going to have to do a little more brake bedding in uh, yeah, after this. <laughs> and uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you later. And remember... Always fight your tickets. Use code TST10 on the Off The Record app available in the Android and iOS store 
or go to offtherecord.com/tst.